Hey, and welcome to the next Better UI video. And in this one, I wanted to look over Smashing Magazine's checkout page. I have a couple suggestions here on, uh, on the right-hand side here of the screenshot. And some of the suggestions I'll talk over are grounded in just my intuition with some of my confidence being expressed on, with using these numbers. And then you also notice that additional ideas, some of the ideas are actually uh, backed by test data. So they have additional numbers here because they have more confidence because they're, um, we have A-B tests to support some of these claims, okay? The key focus for, for all these suggestions is the primary metric of driving more sales. Naturally, I mean, it's a checkout page, so getting close to closing a sale here. So with the screenshot here, I've actually added, imagine I added um, a particular info product or sorry, um, an actual book, Design Systems. And I'll go over these suggestions one by one. The first one is applying some sort of tunnel. So I made, made a mention here, tunnel the checkout. Okay, this is the full screenshot here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. This is what it looks like. And I'm making a guess, a very neutral guess. A zero is a 50-50, okay? And I'm making a guess that if most of this stuff here were to be removed with more focus on the key task of filling out this checkout screen, maybe conversions, maybe sales would increase. Okay, again, a very neutral zero. because. That's how I feel about it, all right? So that's one. The next thing I feel a bit more confident about is uh, using product thumbnails, which is referencing this area here. So looking at the screen here, uh, design, the, the thing I'm purchasing is, is very, very subtle, design systems, book. I think this could be strengthened with maybe some way like, a little thumbnail, which makes the, which reminds me of the product. Um, I also, uh, under this suggestion here, I added slightly more of a clarifying statement or descriptor that this is a printed book. This isn't just an info product. And this actually also comes with a downloadable ebook, which these guys didn't mention here, I think. Um, so yeah, reminding very clearly of what it is that I'm getting in this case two things. Okay, that's, I'm placing a little one. A one is a maybe better. Um, next idea, limiting field length. Okay, so these fields such as the email field and the city are quite wide. And some time ago, I heard that probably field length should be kind of tailored towards more or less what the the value will be, uh, the value, the length of the value they'll be entered, okay? I think there's some sort of perception thing going on that if, if, if a field is actually shorter, it looks like there's less work to be done. Um, I think that's the maybe hypothesis be, be behind something like that. Um, I don't know much about this. So again, I'm placing it as a, as a maybe, which is a zero. Uh, but this is one little suggestion that could be explored in a real experiment. Uh, moving on, next thing in line is the classic pattern of uh, around removing or deprioritizing, de-emphasizing discount codes. Discount codes have a thing to themselves where they really make people feel like if, if someone doesn't have a code, uh, it amplifies the feeling that like, oh, other people might be getting a discount and I'm not getting a discount. So that's that's the message that might be uh, accidentally sent to, to customers. Um, it also has a tendency of sending people away and in, in search of codes on, on Google and, and discount code sites and such. Okay. Um, so I'm placing, uh, making a, marking this, uh, suggestion as a two, which is, uh, uh, most likely a better, uh, improve like a, an actual improvement. Uh, but notice that we're, we're referencing pattern one with uh, additional confidence for it, totaling at 4.75. And we're also projecting a median impact uh, from, from something like this. And here's the pattern. 
Okay, so basically a removal or de-emphasizing uh, of, of, of the coupon field. We have four tests supporting this. Uh, most of them are have increased sales, have uh, impacted uh, checkout screens. Most recently, this one here from Norman Records, basically uh, improved sales by two and a half percent. The median from most of the of, from all of these tests is uh, around thirteen percent. So that's what we know based on four experiments. Okay. The actual implementation of this is again instead of just a full on removal. Uh, will be a maybe it's a way of de-emphasizing it. So turning this into a link, have a promo code. If someone clicks on this, maybe that's when it actually shows the code. All right. Consistent color and styles. Um, this is this is something I always am very very sensitive to. So notice, look at look at the color green. Okay, here's one instance of green. Here's another instance of green. Here's another instance of green, and here's another button color that's green, okay? And usually to, I, I try to aim for consistency, okay? So if I'm going to be using green, it should probably have one of the um, three or four functions such as, is it is it is it clickable? Okay, so only this element is actually clickable. This is the call to action, this is the button, nothing else can be acted. And yet it's still being used for other for other other purposes, such as customer details is is, uh, is being used to indicate a selected state. So it's actually telling me where I am at, okay, in customer details, step one of three. Uh, this is a clickable function as, as discussed. These are just highlights. Okay, so all of this green is used for multiple functions. Uh, and the suggestion in this case would be to really use color consistently. Consistently, Sorry. Um, so all of these functions have different styles. I don't have any data for this, unfortunately. So just a little one here. Uh, but that's typically how something to think about, okay, when using color. Urgent next day delivery. Okay, pattern 62. This is a suggestion where uh, here's the instant, here's the implementation, here's the solution of, of uh, or, or conceptual representation of this. Basically, telling people, adding a little bit of urgency and telling them that, hey, if they act before X time, in this case, maybe, I don't know, guessing maybe 4 p.m something will happen a little bit sooner and maybe it'll get shipped today or maybe it'll get shipped tomorrow. Okay, some promise that we can make. Uh, maybe there's some sort of truck that leaves and and, uh, and and we have some sort of threshold, some sort of cutoff time. And uh, that's just communicating when that's, when, when how much time we have left. Okay, uh, here is the pattern that we have for this. We have two tests, a median impact of 9% uh, on sales. Uh, both tests are positive. And yeah, so we're basically pulling this data and appending it to our own confidence of one and also predicting some sort of impact, 9% impact from something like this. All right. What's it worth is another similar pricing based pattern I might have mentioned before and in other reviews. Uh, the idea is uh, to augment uh, an actual price point with possibly some sort of higher price point that maybe the, the product is worth. So in case if there's discounting going on, if there's bundling going on, um, if, if uh, maybe two items are being you know, are being shipped together. In this case, maybe it's like a, a printed book and a uh, and an ebook. Uh, maybe some sort of calculation can be done, and 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 it can like the, basically the product can be presented in such a way that you're getting twenty nine. Like you're getting the customer is getting thirty nine dollars worth for twenty nine. So having a higher uh, price point and that's crossed out, and they're getting it for less. Um, the point here is not to 
make this up and and you know and, and make it artificial but there there are cases where um it can be framed as such and um, i think that's also a good idea to to do so okay have some data on this pulling this again adding our own one which is a maybe improvement from uh, as well as additional points from past tests okay moving on uh removing ambiguity in awkward check boxes okay so i mean the smashing has a sense of humor here and a particular style and the way they're, they're, they're communicating this but they added this little extra checkbox here okay i just like ticking off large check boxes which is yeah i guess i, I guess it is humorous um <clears throat> the thing with this is just because we have you know, just because we're taking up this space, uh, this call to action is going lower, it's being pushed down lower. So if we're completely, if we were to completely remove this, um, one other side benefit will be, you know, this would this would go higher. But the main idea is, I mean, I'm, I'm checking out. I'm, I'm taking out my credit card. It, it sounds a little bit like these guys are joking with with my credit card. I, I don't know. So I'm, I'm making a little speculation here with with a possibly. Um, it might be a possible improvement if we just get rid of this and, and stop confusing, maybe, maybe scare some customers away. Um, so yeah, that's one little suggestion to, to increase sales here. And then notice at the very bottom, uh, there's a big, 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 big footer with bunch of items, lots of links to all sorts of cool material and, and lots of amazing content as these guys provide. But again, this there's more opportunity to just cut most of this out and keep the focus on this, all right? And, and finish what I started checking out. Further down, I have another state of the same checkout with some error messages and an unchecked uh, unchecked uh, billing and shipping address kind of uh, checkbox here. Okay, a couple additional suggestions here. Okay, so if I don't enter any uh, or some of the field field names, if I leave them blank and I hit uh, continue to payment, of course, rightfully so. Amazing thing here is happening. There's some uh, uh, inline validation and, and inline errors. First one that I'm picking up uh, on which could be a little bit slightly improved is is this the statement here please enter your email no fishy emails from us we promise okay this little phrase here no fishy emails that sends negative connotations that undermines trust that's fearful it makes it making i think it could could make customers think twice whether these guys were actually send me maybe fear like uh, fishy emails or something like that right i haven't thought of that but maybe now that you said that um yeah these are trust undermining elements and we know this from one little test which is still under good ui evidence and it's this little uh, experiment was this was run on uh, on a checkout screen and notice this little sentence here to reduce fraud fraud in this case obviously is the the um uh, the fearful copy element your id might be requested upon or uh, upon pickup in the B variation, we just completely removed any reference to fraud and communicated your ID may be requested upon order to pick up. Sales increased 1% or close to, suggestively. Okay, so this is a positive test with a low impact, but nevertheless, we take this data and we reuse it here. Okay, 1% in some cases might be a lot. Um, and some, for some reason, it might be little but this is what we know. Clear error states. Okay, so here's Smashing's uh, magazine uh, humor again, referencing the first name, no cat is an island. I, I don't know what that means. Uh, or if you leave your street address blank, no imaginary addresses, please. Uh, again, a little, a little negative undertone as if implying I'm, I'm a liar and I want to provide some sort of imaginary street address like why would i i mean i want to get this book so 
um, I think there's a place to joke and I think there's a place to <laughs> close sales, okay? Maybe check out as the uh, checkout screens are the latter. Um, another um, usability, visibility, usability thing. <laughs> um, this box, okay? When someone unchecks this box and is in a particular state, like 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 maybe here, there's a slight tendency that nothing, like basically users won't see anything that has changed other than the scroll bar has, maybe the scroll bar position um, shifts because more content has been added below. So more specifically, when this is checked, you don't see this. When someone unchecks this, this appears, okay? The suggestion here is to always ensure that if I'm going to be unchecking this, if I want to add additional billing address information fields, uh, possibly scroll down a little bit and at least at least show uh, the thing, the elements that are actually appearing, so that my attention's uh, sent to this to these fields, and I know that something else appeared. So one little uh, way of better providing feedback. With, with that subtle interaction, okay? So those are the suggestions uh, that I have. Hopefully these would improve sales on a screen uh, such as this. The best thing I think uh, in this case would be obviously to run an experiment, um, an A-B test. Of course, um, anyone could get creative with this. So there's a, there's a potential here. Here you see uh, kind of a unified concept. Uh, but depending on on, um, on how much traffic people are getting or what they kind of want to learn, uh, some of these ideas could be dissected into smaller variations or separate tests. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully it was useful. And uh, yeah, please leave your uh, comments and uh, thanks.